Hi traders, this is Taylor from the tradinganalyst.com and we're going to go over uh, one of my favorite setups here. I'm going to cover a bunch of different examples and the favorite setup that I'm talking about is the box breakout setup. Okay, There's many different names for it. I didn't come up with it. It's been around for a long time. Uh, a lot of people use it successfully, and I love to use it. It's one of my favorite, if not my favorite, setup. So uh, we can call it the box breakout uh, trade setup, uh, Bollinger Band squeeze setup. Um, there's also a uh, indicator on Thinkorswim, the TTM squeeze indicator that uh, kind of measures the same kind of thing uh, that you can trade off of. It's all the same thing. What it is, is it's a uh, contracting of price in a narrow range and then a breaking out of that range, okay? So this is Google, uh, and this is a recent uh, chart for Google. This is the 15-minute chart for Google, and we have a box here. As you can see, it traded in this box back and forth in this really tight range. All right. This is uh, just about a $5 range on Google, and it traded in that range for about three days. All right. Three days, and we're just trading in this $5 range uh, for Google. Okay. Now, uh, I use the, uh, when I'm using any time frame, Okay, I use the close and open of candles to make my box. Okay, so most of the, uh, here's the open of a candle, here's an open of a candle, here's a close, open, open. Okay, so you get the idea. Okay, and you want to see all touches. All right, see how there's a lot of touches? There's a lot of, we broke over this uh, angle, and then once we broke over, there was still a lot of touches that touched that level. We came back here, bounced from that level, bounced from it again, bounced from it here, and you can see that these candles broke below it, but ended up closing above this level, okay? Same thing here, we bounced from here, and then we bounced from here, and then we broke below it right here, okay? Another thing that I wanna notice is that you can have an early hint right here as we're making lower highs right there, okay? So we're making the same lows down here, same lows, and we're making lower highs over here, okay? So you can kind of combine two setups. You know, this is a downtrend line, um, and that'll give you more confidence in, in the direction of the trade, okay? So the reason that these trades are so powerful is because when you're contracting in price like this, okay, a very tight range, when you break out of that range, the move can be quite significant, okay? In this case, we got uh, from 758 to almost 750. That's a uh, just over a 1% move on Google. If you're playing weekly options, that's at least 100% gain on those options, okay? So uh, do not underestimate the significance of this setup. Okay, so next I want to show you uh, the indicators and how they can play uh, a part in this trade. Okay, so this is still the Google 15-minute chart, okay? This is just a, a different look here. Same chart that we were looking at before. Only difference is down here, we've got the indicators, okay? So RSI is a really great indicator to give you early warning signs of the direction of the breakout, okay? The breakout or the breakdown. Here, we have Google showing an RSI in negative divergence, okay? And this is a trend, this is a nice clean trend of lower lows and lower highs on this RSI as Google is trading in this box, okay? Same thing with MACD, trending down. That's a negative divergence, all right? 
Same thing with stochastics right here. Uh, but my two favorites uh, to use for this are uh, RSI and MACD. So early warning signs, you can get in early on the trade if you'd like using those indicators. But you really, in order to get in early, you really want to see a trend on these indicators, okay? And just know that price is most important. So you're taking somewhat of a, uh, a bigger risk and not waiting for the confirmation by going early with the indicators. And I'm going to show you some examples later that will show you that uh, the indicators are not always right, okay? But... If you wait for confirmation, you're going to have a very high probability of success. And what's that confirmation? That confirmation is a close below the box or above the box. Okay. In this case, since we're using a 15 minute chart, these candles right here closed below the box. So we can get short on that close below the box and then we get that profit right there, okay? So, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, yeah, so that's it for the uh, uh, Google, and I'll move on to the next one. Okay, so GoPro right here. This is the 15-minute chart here. Okay, so look at it. Same kind of thing. We've got a box here, a touch here, 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 a lot of touches. You want to see a lot of touches, okay? A couple touches up here, 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 okay? You want to see a lot of touches, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not making up these levels, okay? Go GoPro is showing us where the level is, okay? Where has it had many touches from, okay? Right here at this 1280 level. All right, and then we broke below here, 1280, went all the way down to about 1190, below $12. That's a big gain, okay? That's almost a 10% move. What is that? About 7% move on GoPro, right? So it's kind of a big deal. Big move to the downside, okay? Now we'll look at the indicators and see if we can see any uh, hints ahead of time okay no not really just kind of no trend here no trend here just kind of trading up and down really close to this uh, uh, 50 level pretty much just in a straight line as straight as, as RSI uh, gets MACD pretty much the same thing just straight right by the zero line no hints right there okay so that's why it's best to wait for confirmation in this case, okay? Because the indicators were not giving us a hint. All right, so I will move on to the next one. And I really just want to show you guys a lot of examples so that you have a good idea of what we're looking at. I want to uh, show you guys a lot. So this is the, uh, we're going to the hourly chart on the S&P 500. And we had a little box here, okay? Here's a box on the top. In the lower end of the box, as you can see, this is an important level. A lot of the highs over here came back over, touched here, touched here, here. All these lows are really close to this box. Touches here, touches here, bounce back up touched here and then we broke below it right here with all these candles and then we saw a big move down 204 all the way down to about 201.75 okay especially if you're playing options that's a big move all right do not underestimate the strength and power of these setups all right so i'll show you the uh, hourly chart with the indicators here and a different look on a different chart Okay, so same thing, uh, don't need to, to go over that, broke below the box. But then as you can see, RSI was trending down, lower lows, lower highs, all right? 
MACD especially was trending down, okay? Gaining momentum below that signal line. As you can see, the histogram was making lower lows, lower lows, trending down, okay? So as you can see, you can get some hints on the direction of the breakout from the indicators. Okay, so I'll move on to the next chart. And for this next one, I'm going to cover the uh, a daily chart here for Gilead Sciences. And Gilead, really nice setup here. As you can see here, we were trading in a box, really tight range from about 87 to about just over 90 dollars uh, up here. A lot of touches up here, touches here. Look at how many times it touched up here and then it couldn't break over. And then we finally got this break over and we saw a big move to the upside. It was about a 4%, uh, 4 to 5% move right there. Okay, that's nothing to sneeze at. That's a big move. Um, and so another thing that I want to notice here is that you can combine these setups with uh, other chart patterns and what have you. So in this case, we have a downtrend line right here, touch here, 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 and then we broke over it with this candle, okay? So that was a first, that was an early warning sign that Guild was going to head higher. And then as you can see here, it held that support from the trend line, and then it broke up higher, okay? Not really that big of a hint on RSI. We did break above it, above the 50 line right there. As you can see, that 50 line was acting as resistance, this dotted line, and then we broke over it right here, and then we held above it, okay? So we broke over it, and then we held above it. So that's an early warning sign. And then as you can see, MACD just trending up the whole time that Guild was trading in that box. Okay, so that was an early warning sign uh, that you could have gotten in early potentially uh, on that trade and gotten an even bigger move on Guild. Okay, it's up to your personal uh, risk uh, um, aversion, how, however much risk you want to take. It's up to you. Okay, uh, next I'm going to cover uh, Twitter here. <clears throat> All right, so Twitter. Twitter just trading in a box right here. Here's the top of the box. Few touches up here, and then a lot of touches down here on this box. As you can see, we almost touch it here, here, and then here we've got so many touches. You know, this candle uh, on this on this day. This is a day of trading right here. One full day of trading. Look at how many times it touched this lower level so many times. A lot of trading went on at that level. The next day, see how many candles are at that level? This is a key, key level. And you see how tight this range is, very, very tight range. This is like a 25 cent range uh, for Twitter that it was trading in for almost three days right here. Okay, three days, and then it finally broke down out of it, and we saw a big move to the downside. Okay, that was a, almost a $2 move. Actually, it was bigger than a $2 move on a uh, $17 stock. Okay, this is like a fifth, it's about a 15% move. That's a big move, and that's in just one day right here. In one day, we moved down big. Okay. So nothing to sneeze at here. These are some big setups. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't a $2 move. I'm getting my math all mixed up. Uh, that was about a, a dollar move, okay? So that'd be more about, um, uh, it's about a you know 11% move or something like that, okay? Uh, I'm not, I don't have my calculator out, so forgive me. <laughs> okay, so uh, I will cover the 15-minute uh, chart here on the, uh, stock charts so you can get a better look and see if there was any clues on the indicators here okay 
So right here, we're trading in a box, broke below it. Were there any hints? No, pretty much just flatlining uh, on this RSI. And as you can see here, we kind of had a bit of a, a fake out. Um, if you were trading just solely based off of the indicators and not waiting for confirmation for a break below or above the box, uh, you would have gotten faked out by this RSI as you saw a big uh, pop in that RSI. Same thing on, on MACD. It was trending up right here. Granted, for only uh, you know half a day right here and only for a little bit here on the RSI, um, but still. So that's why it's, it's always best to wait for confirmation. If you really want to, you can get in early, but you want to see a trend like we saw on those other ones. This is not really a trend on the RSI, okay? This is not that big of a trend for MACD. It is a trend for about a half a day, but as you can see over here, this is a trend, okay? This is a trend lasting for about two days down, okay? That's the kind of thing that we wanna look for, not a half day uh, signal right here, not you know a couple minute uh, pop up on that RSI. Okay guys, those are all the charts that I have for this setup. I really hope that this video will help you out in your trading or investing in the market. Have any questions? contact me on the contact page on the website www.thetradinganalyst.com. See you next time.